Hello everyone, I'm Sarah and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Now today's video is our scrap happy crochet along pattern for November. And what our pattern is, is I'm calling it the Let's Give Thanks Table Runner. And I'm calling that simply because I got in my cotton yarn stash and used fall colors and I'm going to put this on my table for Thanksgiving. But of course you can use any cottons you have in your yarn stash. It's a beautiful and simple table runner. You can see we have sort of a fringy edge here and then it's completely striped and it's a three row repeat. So you can do whatever colors of yarn that you would like and stripe it however you would like. You could use it all in one color or maybe make it in an ombre or just a simple striping yarn. All right, and it's really nice. And the thing about a table runner is you can continue the pattern for as long as you need for the size of your table or make it shorter and make it into some placemats. So we have the fringy edge on both edges and then the striping through the middle. Now this one measures approximately 10 and a half inches across and about 28 inches long. And then of course we have the added fringe. You can find this complete pattern with pictures on my blog. And as always, I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. To make your scrap happy table runner or give thanks table runner, you're going to need three ounces of four different colors or a total of 12 ounces of yarn. And I'm doing mine all in 100% cotton, but of course you can use acrylic if you want to. Just keep in mind that cotton absorbs the moisture, acrylic does not. If you want it just for decoration, acrylic is perfect because it will still protect your table from scratches and things being spilt on it. It just won't absorb those moistures. All right, so you need four different colors or more, three ounces each, or a total of 12 ounces of cotton yarn or acrylic. <laughs> now what I used here is I love this cotton from Hobby Lobby in the beige, the rust, and this nice brown. Then I grabbed this variegated, and this is the Lion brand variegated. I really liked how it played in here and gave me that extra little set of stripes in different colors along with my solids and I really liked that. But of course you can use whatever colors you have on hand. I do recommend that if you're going to use cotton, use cotton for your whole project. If you're going to use acrylic, make sure you use acrylic for the whole project because remember acrylic and cotton wash up differently. All right. We're going to be stitching today with our H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle just for weaving in ends. And we're going to have quite a few because we are changing colors every three rows. And because it's a long ways before we bring the next color in, I'm not carrying my yarn on the side. So I will have a little bit of weaving in to do. So keep that in mind when you choose your colors also. And then of course you're gonna need a pair of scissors. All right, now go get in your cotton yarn stash or in your regular yarn stash and come up with some really cool colors for any holiday, Christmas, Easter, 4th of July, and of course, fall and Thanksgiving. I'm starting with my color one, which is a light beige. We're going to begin with a slip knot, and we're going to chain 37 chains. Now, we're going to be stitching in rows back and forth. They'll actually be this way. <laughs> and so you want that initial chain to be just a little bit loose. You don't want the bottom of your table runner to be puckered up. And so you want to stitch just a little bit loose 
and we're going to stitch 37 chains. I have chained my 37 chains and we're going to begin by stitching a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. We never count the loop on our hook, of course, so one, two. We're going to go in, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both loops. And now we're going to stitch one single crochet in each of those chains working all the way across. One single crochet in each of those chains working all the way across. I have stitched one single crochet in each of my chains across. We began in the second chain from the hook, so we have 36 single crochets. We're going to chain three and turn our work. The chain three counts as our first double crochet, so we're going to double crochet in the next single crochet. Now we're going to work a row of cross stitches. So we're going to skip the next stitch and double crochet in the next. Now we're going to cross back and double crochet from back to front in that stitch that we skipped. That's our first cross. All right, so we'll skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next, and then cross back and double crochet in that stitch that we skipped. And we'll repeat this working all the way across. Now one thing I want to show you on here is where this stitch is, that's not your next stitch. Okay, the one you're going to skip is this one and then double crochet in the next. If you stitch in that same stitch there, you'll get your count off, okay? Alrighty, so skip the next, double crochet in the next, and then cross back and double crochet in that stitch that we skipped. And we're going to repeat this working all the way across this row until we reach those last two stitches. Isn't that a lovely stitch? one of my favorites. <laughs> so here's our two double crochets. Our chain three counted as one and then we double crocheted. And then I have 16 cross stitches, sometimes called crossover stitches. And that leaves me with two single crochets at the end. And we're just going to stitch one double crochet in each of those two. One, there we go, and two, and then chain one. And so this is the way that row two should look. We have our chain three and our double crochet, which counts as two double crochets, 16 cross stitches, and then two double crochets on the end and chain one. Now for row three, we've chained one. We're gonna turn our work. Our chain one does not count as a stitch. So we're going to stitch a single crochet right in that first double crochet and then we're going to stitch a single crochet in each of those stitches across. Now, when you're working across a row like this, where the stitches are sort of crossed around like these are, your best way to find where to put your stitches is to look on the top. And you'll put a stitch through each one of those sets of two loops, where it kind of looks like a braid. Because you want to have a total of 36 single crochets. That way we don't get off count. Every row will have 36 stitches. When we count our cross stitches, each cross stitch is two stitches. And so that's where we get the 16 cross stitches. All right. And then for row three, we're gonna be back to 36 single crochets. 
one single crochet in each of the stitches across. I completed row three, which is one single crochet in each of the stitches across. So I have 36 single crochets. Now I'm not going to chain one because I'm going to change colors. All right, because we have four colors, I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn and not carry my yarn. So I'm going to bring in my color two. And then chain one. When changing colors, always do that chain one, two, three, or whatever after the color change. That way when we turn our work and begin our next row, we have the right color where it needs to be. If I was changing on a chain three, and that chain three counted as a stitch, it would be the wrong color. It'd be rust instead of the beige. All right? All right, so for row four, we're going to stitch a row of single crochets. And so our chain one does not count as a stitch. And we'll go right in that first single crochet and stitch one single crochet in each of those single crochets across. One single crochet in each of our single crochets working all the way across. I have completed row four, stitching one single crochet in each of my single crochets across. So again, I have 36 single crochets. Now before we do the next row, I wanna show you what I do with my tails, all right? So what I do, because I'm going to be stitching over them when I put the trim on, I do what I call a stay knot, and it's just where I put those two together so it doesn't come unraveled. And then when we come back in and do our trim, I'll single crochet over that and then bring my needle in and weave them in, all right? But I don't want them to come undone while I'm working. And so I do that little stay knot just so they stay put. All right, so now we're going to chain three. We're going to turn our work and we're going to repeat what we did on row two. Our, double cro or our chain three counts is our first double crochet. Then we'll double crochet in the next stitch, and then we'll do those 16 cross stitches. So we'll skip the next, double crochet in the next, and then cross back and double crochet in that stitch that we skipped. Skip the next, double crochet in the next, and cross back and double crochet in that stitch that we skipped. And we'll continue to do this till we have those 16 cross stitches. And we'll end with two stitches unworked on the end and we'll stitch a double crochet in each of those. So I stitched those 16 crossover stitches or cross stitches, left me with two single crochets. So I'm going to double crochet in those last two and chain one. And so again, I have my chain three and my double crochet at the beginning, 16 cross stitches and two double crochets at the end. Chain one and turn. And now for row six, we're going to stitch one single crochet in each of those single crochets across. And again, if you follow those sets of loops on the top, it will make it a lot easier for you to find your stitches when you're working across those cross stitches. One single crochet in each of the stitches across. I have completed row six, just stitching one single crochet in each of my stitches across. And again, you need to have 36 stitches. And so what you're going to do is you're going to continue to repeat these three rows, a row of single crochet, a row of our cross stitches, and a row of single crochet, 
changing colors every three rows. And let me move my swatch out of the way here just so I can show you on this one. And this is the way I worked this one. Here's my first three rows in my beige. Then I switched to the rust color and did single crochet, cross stitch, single crochet. Then I switched to the brown. And I don't want to use the brown on camera because it's really dark and would be hard for you to see. But I did a single crochet, cross stitch, single crochet. Then I switched to this fun variegated, which I totally love, and um, did the same thing. Single crochet, cross stitch, single crochet. Cutting my yarn every time. And then I brought back in the cream and I just continued to repeat the beige, the rust, the brown, the variegated. The beige, the rust, the brown, the variegated. Over and over. And that's how I striped mine. Changing colors every three rows and alternating the four colors in sections. Now, you can do yours however that you want to. You can continue to do the same color for, you know, nine rows or do the whole 12 rows. So you could stripe it however that you want to. It's just a repeat of a single crochet, a cross stitch row, and a single crochet. Do it all in one color. Use a striping yarn however that you want to. And then once you get it as long as you want it, we're going to single crochet all the way down to the side. Then I'm going to show you how to make these fun little loopy fringe. Then we'll single crochet at the other side and add fringe on the end. All right, we're going to work with our swatch here. Once you have made your table runner as long as you want, you'll just cut your yarn or use the last color that you have and bring in the color you want to use for your trim. And I'm just going to use this beige for our swatch trim. And what you're going to do is you're going to evenly single crochet down the side. All right, so I'm going to make that little stay knot there. And then we're going to stitch over these tails of yarn. But you want to make sure when you're leaving your tails of yarn that you leave enough to stitch over and then come back in with your needle and weave that in. And I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? So let's pretend like this is the whole side of our table runner. And you're just going to go in and single crochet. And you want to go around those tails of yarn for just a couple of stitches. And the reason I do that is I like that it puts it where it needs to be and makes it a lot easier when it comes time to weave those in. All right. All right. So I'm just going to let those drop. And then I would single crochet down doing that over each portion where I have some tails of yarn where I changed colors. If I changed colors, you may not be changing colors. So now I've stitched all the way down. This is my swatch, of course. Yours will be a lot longer. And when you get to the bottom, you're going to chain seven chains. All right, now you're going to stitch a double crochet in the second chain from the hook. Then slip stitch in that same chain and then chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll skip the first stitch and slip stitch in the next. All right, then we'll chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Double crochet in the second chain from the hook. Then slip stitch in that same chain and chain seven. There we go. We'll skip the next stitch and <clears throat> slip stitch in the next. And that's how you form that fun little loopy fringe. It makes a nice little puff ball on the end. 
and it's super fun. Let's do it again. Chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Double crochet in the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch in that same chain and then chain seven. Skip the next stitch and slip stitch in the next. And you'll repeat that working all the way across. You'll do this all the way across and then you'll work back up this side of your work and then repeat this on the end. Once you have stitched all the way around, you've done your fringe on the bottom and the top and you've single crochet down your sides, you're going to have some pieces that look like this. And it's very important that you weave those in. Don't just cut them or they'll come undone. Especially if this gets dirty and you put it through the wash, those will come undone. So you want to take your needle and just put that tail of yarn in there and weave that in. And I also, it's very important that when you're weaving this in, you don't weave it in the wrong shade of color. Because if I weave this in this orange, it might show through on the other side, and that wouldn't look very neat. So you want to try to do that in the color that you're working with. And that tail of yarn was a little bit short, so let me weave that back on there. There we go. I should say thread that back on there. All right, and then you can cut that after you've weaved that in a little bit. Let me show you with this orange one because I have a little bit longer of a tail of yarn. And you want to make sure you leave yourself a little bit on each one of these because you want that to be securely woven in or woven in. <laughs> and so I'm going to go in this rust here. I like to go in. I like to go up a stitch and go about halfway back and then turn and come back up. And when you do that, if you can go through some of the fibers of the yarn you just stitched, it'll hold it nice and secure. And it also looks a lot neater. See where I weave that in? It looks nice and neat. Let's look on the front. It looks nice and neat here as well. Weaving in your ends is one of the most important things in your crochet stitches because if you do it messy and a stitch shows through, it doesn't look good, especially if you're making this for a gift. So take a few minutes, weave all those ends in, and you'll have a much neater and tidier project. And so here is my completed table runner. Here's my fun little loopy fringed edge, and then all my stripes, my sides are stitched up, and all my ends are all woven in neatly. I have not blocked this yet, so it isn't as crisp as I would like it. I do suggest that you dampen this with a little bit of a water from a spray bottle. Don't soak it under your sink. Just use a spray bottle with just water and dampen it all over. Lay it out flat. You can pin it on a towel if you need to. I like to lay mine on a towel and then set it on my dryer especially on Mondays and Tuesdays when I have to do the laundry. <laughs> Monday and Tuesday is my laundry day. And so then the heat of the dryer will come up through uh, the towel and will help it crisp up nice and neat. All right, and again, remember, you can do as many repeats of the three rows as you need in any colors that you want, and really any fiber, as long as you stick within the same fiber. I actually prefer cotton for this one, but I have done others in acrylic yarn. You can use a striping yarn, an ombre, or just get in your yarn stash and make one with all different colors. I think it would be absolutely beautiful. All right, so this is our Scrap Happy Project for November. It's our Give Thanks Table Runner.